This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Ellie Barnes talks about her research on hepatitis C and her work on a T-cell vaccine. Hello Ellie. Hi. Why do we need a vaccine against hepatitis C? Hepatitis C is a massive problem worldwide. There's 170 million people the World Health Organization has estimated infected worldwide. Uh, in some parts of the world, it's as high as 10, 20% of the population in parts of Asia. Uh, here in the United Kingdom, 0.5%, so that's 300,000 people have hepatitis C. And once you're infected, um, in some people, they live with their virus without any problems, but in others, the virus over many years causes liver scarring, uh, eventually liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, and liver failure. Uh, it's actually one of the leading causes now for liver transplantation here in the United Kingdom. So obviously uh, a vaccine that could prevent all that from happening would be a fantastic clinical asset. And why is it proving difficult to develop a vaccine? All the the vaccines that we currently have that work, work through inducing an antibody response, inducing the antibody arm of the immune response. And the problem with hepatitis C is that that approach on its own is unlikely to work. And the reason for that is that antibodies target the, the outer surface of the hepatitis C virus, which is very variable. So the antibodies are chasing something which is constantly able to alter itself and escape from that. Since the antibody approach alone is not going to work, we're taking um, a different strategy, which is to induce the T cell arm of the immune response. And we're using viral vectors, so adenoviral vectors that contain large parts of the hepatitis C virus genome itself to induce an immune response, a T cell immune response against hepatitis C. How would a prophylactic and therapeutic vaccine work? So a prophylactic vaccine works by preventing infection in the first place. And the idea here is that you give someone a vaccine, you induce an immune response so that it has a head start, so that when the person is exposed to the virus, the immune system is already set in play. Whereas with a therapeutic vaccine, you are trying to get rid of uh, an infection that's already well established, and that's much more difficult to do. How far away are we from a vaccine against hepatitis C? We're still some years away, um, but progress is very fast at the moment. So here in Oxford, we have at the moment um, one phase one study that's just finished, two that are currently in progress. We're using T-cell vaccines that are the most potent described to date. Phase two studies are one of those is just beginning in the United States. So I think for a prophylactic vaccine, there's real hope that's going to come in the next few years. A therapeutic vaccine is going to take longer. Most of the work to develop a T-cell vaccine has been done against a particular genotype. So there there are six different genotypes which reflect differences in the structure of the virus. Um, And within the United Kingdom, many patients are infected with non-genotype 1 strain, genotype 3. And one of the other things that we're working on within our laboratory is trying to understand the immune system against genotype 3 infection. And that will be particularly relevant to the UK population. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Something we've been working on in our lab now for the past 10, 15 years has been understanding the fundamental biology around the immune system and how that targets the virus. Um, What's fascinating about this infection is that a significant minority of patients can get rid of the virus using their own immune response and we've been trying to work out what is it about the immune response in patients that can do that to patients whose immune response can't and explore those differences to try to use them in a strategy for developing a vaccine. So that's one aspect. Um, We've got some fantastic new drugs that are coming online uh, in the next couple of years uh, which are being brought into patient populations and that will increase the clearance rate in, in patient populations. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? We've moved our work forward from a basic laboratory looking at basic T-cell immunology to a situation where we're now giving new products to patients and that's very translational. We're very excited about that. Thank you, Ellie.